But guys, let's go ahead and move on to topic number four. And this is sad because I was really looking forward to this movie right here. But that is oh, James Bond. No, no. no time to die. God, it's being on. delayed again. It is being delayed again. Unfortunately, I know it really does suck. It does suck. Yeah. We have this report coming from Deadline. No time to die is poised to depart Easter weekend for a fall release. You know, um, I don't. I mean, it, it should come. It should be no shocker. We're hearing that MGM Eon's No Time to Die is bound to move from its Easter weekend release of April the 2nd to sometime in the fall as the world waits for the pandemic to come under control. Several sources inform us this morning. Note the UK is a key market in No Time to Die's rollout, and they're facing similar situation as the US. They don't know exactly when exhibition will be fully back up and running. Mm -hmm. uh, the leakage on Carrie Joe G. Fuganaga directed film started yesterday on a Dutch site being the steam in which Dutch exhibitor Carlo Lambretz revealed that he had no time to die was heading from his Easter weekend to November. We heard separately this morning that 007 promotional material has already been given a heads up that the final Daniel Craig movie is bound to move to autumn. No definite release date has been set yet, despite Lambretz spilling the beans. What do you guys think of this news? How are you accepting it? Um, it's simple. MGM needs to partner with someone who has a streaming apparatus so they can put it on the stream and charge people for it because they're pushing it back because of their concerns with coronavirus. And they highlighted that the, the market they think is going to make the most money is the UK. Then mm -hmm. they go on to further highlight that the UK is going through the same problems we're having with coronavirus their numbers are going up too it's not going to be better by the fall people even if even if everybody gets the shot that needs to get the shot we still are not going to be out of troubled waters in the fall mgm needs to either set up a temporary app where they let people pay to see the movie so they don't got to push it back or let it come out in the fall one way or the other one or we're going to keep getting pushed back because i my fear here is Fall gets here, UK has two new variants of the coronavirus strand, and they're saying those variants aren't taking well with the vaccine. When fall gets here, you're going to have to say, well, we're going to try to push it back till January, or we're going to push it back to next spring. Put it on a streaming apparatus and charge people. I'm giving the floor back to y'all. Um, the thing about that, uh, I, I see what you're saying, and the only thing is it's easier said than done. Let me read this real quick. MGM screened the the movie stream. I can't read. MGM screened the movie for streamers with a reported asking price of six hundred million, mm. but none of them were willing to pony up even half of that. The mm. pick is a juggernaut to MGM's financial sustainability, and the studio is adamant about protecting the film's global theatrical window, given the riches that can rain down from the final Craig 007 pick. The last Bond film, Spectre, grossed eight hundred and eighty million dollars in two thousand fifteen. Mm -hmm. While Skyfall released in 2012 reaped in the highest double O pick of all time with $1.1 billion. Those outside of MGM have seen the movie says it is amazing and it is well worth the wait. So hmm. they're trying to push it back because it's like, man, we're trying to get this 1.1 billion again, you know, and we're not going to make it if it goes on a streaming platform. But Larry, I'm going to give it to you. What you think, man? What you think? All right. This is what I'm thinking right here. First of all, Oh, I was yeah. super geeked up to know that the last sentence where they said it's well worth the wait. I am a Bond fan, man. I cannot wait to see this thing. I'm I'm geeked up about it. I will say this. This is the perfect opportunity for Netflix to raise their prices again. Netflix should come out with a different tier called Netflix One where it's all first run movies and charge people $25 a month and that separate section of their of their service is only accessible to people who have Netflix one and then you can go and watch the bond movies that way they'll generate enough income that Netflix can afford to pay the 600 million dollars for this movie and they can pump it up and have it set for a for a July 4th launch date and there you go Netflix will have, and they can just set it up. Let, let everybody know. We're going to have all these movies coming out. We're going to launch Netflix one on, I don't know, sometime in June, get it all ramped up and ready to go so you can work any bugs out. And then boom, July 4th, the new Bond movie comes out 
and everybody's happy. Netflix is Netflix stock goes through the roof. Everybody gets to see the Bond movie. MGM gets their six hundred million. Everyone's happy. Which how much? So this Netflix one, this premium service you're promoting right now, <laughs> how much would you be willing to pay extra for that? Because I think the regular Netflix right now has it was sixteen. The, the premium, the the highest tier was sixteen, seventeen, ninety nine. So I think it's yeah, I think it's sixteen, seventeen bucks. So just move it up to move it up to twenty five dollars. Just move it, like if you want if you want access to this separate tier that's just gonna have first run movies, make make it an extra you know make the price twenty five dollars. So you so you're bringing in an extra what almost nine bucks a month, mm -hmm. you know from from your subscribers who go there. Okay, and, and I, mean, I, I think I, I think that. I don't, you know, B. Avery, me and Larry both come from the, the tech world a little bit. And one thing that they keep trying to figure out is how to ramp down movie piracy. Mm -hmm. And th this was an argument that was being made in the 90s about music piracy. And who popped up? Spotify with mm -hmm. a, a subscription that was affordable enough that people would go get the quality music versus trying to do all the digging to get it piracy wise. And if you find that sweet spot in a streaming app where people can get these movies, I think that they would do it. And I think that would ramp down on the piracy that they're never going to be able to get rid of um, unless you do something where people feel like it's a value and affordable for them. I think 25 to 30 bucks could be that spot. And, you know, I still don't think that they would do this, even if Netflix pony up the 60 million, the mm -hmm. 600 million. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're saying they think that this is going to do more than the 1.1 billion the last movie did. Right. So let's just say Netflix did say, we'll get, let's say Netflix came to you and said, we'll give you 800 million. It doesn't sound like they have an appetite to do that, but the problem behavior they're going to run into. You can't put a timeline on when we're going to officially open back up from coronavirus because we have too many idiots running around on the planet earth. Yeah. It's just, and it only takes, it takes a small few idiots to ruin it for the majority of the people doing everything right. So you can't, I mean, I'm looking at it like when, when they get ready to try to release this in the fall, they're going to be looking at the numbers be like, man, we're going to have to push it back because there's just not a big enough appetite for people to go to the movies. So I'm telling you, Set up a stream service, charge people what you would charge at the theater, and let them enjoy it at home. Think wow. about this, B. Avery. Think about this. Imagine, imagine Netflix says we're going to raise the price, whatever it is. Let's say the price for their – I don't know what they charge right now. Let's say it's $16.99. So let's say mm. they're going to raise it for their Netflix One service. I just made that up. There's no Netflix One, right? But let's just say right. they make Netflix One, and they raise the price by $10 a month. So now it costs you $26.99 a month. And you get all these first run movies, maybe from MGM and from, you know, maybe from Fox or whoever else that it's going to be on the service. And the movies run on there for, say, like 60 days or 90 days. And then they pull them for maybe another six, another, you know, 60 days or 90 days. And then they bring them back to the regular service on, you know, on Netflix there. So it's not like people can just say, oh, I'm just going to wait. I'll just wait for I'll, it's going to be on there for 60 days. I can wait two months or I can wait three months. No, nah, you have to you can you have the opportunity to watch it during those three months. And then if you miss it, you may have to wait another three months or six months before it goes to the regular service. And hey, I'm not mad at know? it. I'm not mad at it. It's going to be, you I know, like no, no, no idea is is that doesn't sound far fetched at all. And no idea is crazy or far fetched. Just you know the way things have turned out right now globally so i mean mm -hmm. a lot of adjustments are going to have to be made and and conversations are going to have to be had and so uh, we we are three gentlemen that are having it so um there you go there you go now 